Hello, good evening. My name is Yogendra Kumar and I am a maths teacher at uh, Ask IITNs. Okay, so today we are going to do rational number chapter, rational numbers, okay, which uh, you have weightage of six marks in your final exams, right? So we need to do this chapter in detail, okay? Uh, okay, I hope I am clear and loud enough, right? Okay. So we are going to do this uh, chapter in which we need to learn. Okay, by the way, this chapter is there in your ninth grade also, which comes with the name uh, number system in which we are going to learn not only about rational numbers, we are going to learn about the irrational numbers also, right? So what uh, what is the basic idea here? Right now you learn about the rational numbers and then you learn all about other numbers also, irrational numbers also. By the way, like whatever numbers we have in maths, they can be divided into two categories, okay? One is what rational, other one is what irrational. So right now we are going to focus on, on the rational numbers, right? So we need to see, we, these are the topics we are going to cover, okay? So topics to be covered are what? Properties of rational numbers, Closer property, commutative property, associativity, right? Commutativity, uh, associativity. We need to see this. Negative of a number and reciprocal of a number. Pretty, pretty easy topics are there. You need to just listen to me carefully. If you listen to me carefully, you're going to remember it. Okay, no need to worry at all, right? Okay, so this is what we are going to do today, right? So what do we have actually? We have real numbers. We have real numbers. Uh, all the numbers which we have, okay, those are what real numbers and those real numbers are divided into two categories, irrational numbers, the numbers which are like pi, e, root two, root three, cube root and all like that, okay, those are irrational numbers. Rational numbers are what? Those numbers which can be written in P by Q form and which we are going to learn in detail, means all integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, okay, fractional numbers, decimal, decimal numbers, these all are what? rational numbers we are going to learn right so we have here properties of okay these properties we need to learn so let's get started right okay so what is closer property right so when we add two rational numbers okay first of all i think we should be having definition of rational numbers so it is not given here no need to worry i'm going to add it here okay what are rational numbers we need to understand those first okay so let me write down the definition of rational numbers so numbers which can be written in uh or we can say real numbers by the way what are the other numbers other than real numbers we have something called as imaginary numbers also, but that is right now you need to remember that there is no imaginary number, okay? You're going to learn in 11th grade somewhere, okay? Which uh, we come like, okay, root of minus one, this kind of form. These are what imaginary numbers, but you don't worry at all about it. You need to just remember till 10th grade, you need to remember that there is no imaginary number because this is just limited to one chapter only complex number is the concept which uh, uh, chapter name okay and that is the only chapter which will be using this okay so that's all you need it is limited to this much only right but yeah that is also a pretty good topic but you will need to learn later on so real numbers which can be written in p by q form Okay, where, where P and Q both are integers and Q is not equals to zero because integer could be zero also, but denominator cannot be zero. So this is what you need to remember. So rational numbers are those numbers which can be written in the P by Q form. So here example, I can give like, if I say 0.1, it is what rational number five because 0.1 divided by one and we can write it one by 10. So this is what P by Q form. So it is what, it is a rational number. This is rational 
number, right? I'm just giving you the idea. You need to remember it. Okay, these are what rational numbers. We are going to learn. We are going to do operations on the rational numbers only, right? To in the today's lecture, right? So I hope you are understanding this, right? Now, see, we we have a closer property. Two rational numbers. If we add, subtract, multiply, we get what rational number only. It will be producing a rational number. So rational number, as I said, okay, p by q form. This is p by q form. So can I add them? Yes, I'm getting p by q form only. So this is what okay we are getting a rational number only. If you subtract also, then also if you multiply also, then also we are going to get a rational number. If we are multiplying rational number to rational number, or we are adding rational number to rational number, so this is what closer property we call it, right? The rational number. Okay, you can say rational number here plus rational. Okay, rational number and rational number. If we add, what are we going to get? Rational itself, right? This is what we need to remember, right? If we add, subtract, or like that. Okay, we do any operation on rational number like that. So we are going to get rational numbers only, right? So this is what you need to remember. I hope you are getting it, right? If you understand this, then let's go to new next topic, okay? Which is what commutative property on rational numbers. So what do we say? Rational numbers follows commutative property. Means what uh, here? Commutative law. What it says? A plus B is going to give you. Like a plus b is what same as b plus a because it is not uh, going to change any value. Same thing goes with the commutative law of multiplication. A into b is same as b into a. Not uh, obviously this is not true. This is not true, right? You can understand. Two minus five. Is it equals to five minus two? No, right? This is not true. But for plus or product, it is true, right? Division also not so commutative property, uh, addition and uh, multiplication. Okay, that is what it follows. Okay, but not the plus or minus. Okay, like this, a plus or sorry, minus or division. My bad. Okay, minus or division will not follow it. Now associative property. What is it? Rational numbers follow associative property for addition and multiplication. So this is what you need to remember. Right. What do we say here? Plus, if I do, if I am adding x, y, z plus, and then I am adding to x, or I am adding x and y, and then adding to z, that is going to give you same result, right? So here for multiplication, what do we do? Same y, z you multiply, then multiply the result from y, z to x, or what do you do? X, y you multiply, and then finally multiply to z. Same thing, same thing you are going to get. So associative property and commutative property on rational numbers is applicable in what operation? Addition and multiplication only. This is what you need to remember. But closer property is applicable for addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication. For all these, we are going to see a closer property, right? So I hope it is clear. Let's move to. Next uh, here on this question, right here. So what they say, show this by distributive property, right? So basically, what we need to show that it is what okay. Basically, the the what is asked in the question that this distributive property is applicable on the rational numbers. This is what we need to show. This is the distributive property on rational numbers. So one by two, if I multiply it to no, uh, like one by two plus one by four. First, I do, and then multiply with one by two. Means if I do LHS, one by two into now here one by two plus one by four, one upon four. So what we are doing here, one upon two into now here addition. So I hope you know this. We need to take the LCM here, right? Here I need to multiply two and two to take the LCM. So two plus one divided by four. So what are we getting? One by two into three by four, which is what three divided by eight. We got LHS is what this. Now RHS, RHS is what here. RHS is one by two into one by two, and 
plus 1 by 2 into 1 by 4. So what do we have here? Now this is 1 by 4 and this is 1 by 8. You can see, right? It gets multiplied like that. So now here we need to make the LCM same. So 2, 2 I need to multiply. Now LCM is same. So 3 divided by 8. So we got LHS is same as RHS. So means what do we say here? Distributive property is applicable. Distributive property is applicable on rational numbers. So this is what we are going to say. Okay, right. This is what they're telling here. Rational numbers are what? These are all rational numbers. And what are these? Irrational numbers. We have these all irrational numbers, right? So I hope you're getting it. This is what you need to understand. Let's move on to, okay, this is what the proof shown here. Okay, now we need to understand very, very important thing, which is what number line we need to understand first. Okay, so number line is what we, we see here uh, about zero. Zero is the point, okay. If you go right to the zero, we get positive numbers. If you go left to the zero, we get negative numbers. This is what we need to remember. This extreme most we say negative infinity and plus infinity here, right like that. And you know, all the numbers are there, rational, irrational, all are available on this number line, right? So negative of a number is what? In mathematics, a neg negative is a real number that is less than zero, right? Because all the numbers this side less than zero are what negative numbers. So this is what we need to remember to understand maths further. We need to remember the number line. We need to understand that if I need to locate any particular point, I should be able to say, so suppose I ask you minus 7.1 is going to be where? So it is going to be somewhere this side, right? Obviously less than five, uh, uh, less than minus five. If I say minus 3.1 is going to be where? So it is going to be somewhere here, right? This is what you need to understand. If I ask you what is four point, where is 4.5? So we should be able to locate. It is going to be exactly in between because this exactly between four and five, it is equidistant from four and five, right? So this is what you need to understand, right? Now, what do you mean by reciprocal of a number? So reciprocal of a number is what? Simply one by that number, right? If suppose I have a five, so reciprocal of five is equals to one by five, simple like this, right? Like that, okay? This is what you need to remember. So reciprocal of a number is what? One by that number, simple. Okay, if, if you say what is reciprocal of, one by five, that is one divided by one by five, which is what? Five itself, right? You have to remember it. You need to remember this rule also. A divided by B and main division C divided by D. So this we get A divided by B into D divided by C like this, right? So this is what A by B into D by C. This is what we get. This rule also you need to remember. You can you can see if, if you get confused sometime, okay, suppose you need to do like uh, one by two divided by one by four. What is the result you are going to get, right? One by two is like half, 0.5 divided by 0.25, right? One half and one fourth half one fourth so it is going to give you double no right so this is what we are going to understand one by two and then four by one here so clearly you can say two to the two it is right this is how you can understand so this result is very important you need to remember this right okay like this here okay let's see here what are the reciprocals of three and eight so three reciprocal is one by three and eight reciprocal is one by eight, simple. What is the negative of minus three, which is uh, minus three by four, which is three by four. Just change the sign. If they ask what is the negative of three by four, so minus three by four. What is the negative of minus three by four? It is what three by four, right? So these are the things you need to understand. I hope you got it. It is pretty simple, right? You need to practice more and more questions to understand it better and to understand these all operations because later on, these all going to be part of simple questions calculation. Okay, like it is gonna be part of the calculation, right? So you need to understand this perfectly. Okay, 
i hope you enjoyed the session okay thank you very much and do watch next uh, lecture also to understand it further thank you very much Thank you.